thank you once again for joining us tonight and uh, clicking on to this video. Uh, we uh, pray that it will be blessed and that you will enjoy the singing. And we have Andrew Hutchison this evening uh, who will bring us a message from God and he will read uh, the, from the Bible, from God's Word. Uh, we'll uh, start with um, singing a hymn, one of my all-time favourites. Uh, On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I hope you enjoy the singing and uh, we will sing a few hymns and then Andrew will speak to us uh, for a few minutes. Thank you for listening.
He says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And we trust that God will bless the reading of his word to us as we consider it for a few moments today. The Lord Jesus, as he makes this invitation to us today, to the whole world, as he made the invitation on the day uh, in which he spoke those words, we, we, we probably uh, would do well to understand this about the invitation that he gave, uh, that he is not speaking, of course, literally about a physical thirst. When he says, if any man thirst, he's not thinking about uh, that which I would say all of us, uh, to some measure, uh, understand when when our bodies are thirsting for water, when, when our tongues are desiring to, to be cooled and refreshed by a drink of water. That isn't so much what the Lord Jesus is speaking of. Uh, he's not thinking of a physical thirst, nor is he thinking about a physical drink. When he says, let them come unto me and drink, he's not thinking about actual uh, water. But you will understand that he is speaking figuratively. That is, as the Lord Jesus often did in his time here on earth, as he spoke to men and women, he would, he would draw pictures that we might understand a more deeper uh, and spiritual truth. And so that is what he's doing here. As he speaks about thirst, I suggest to you what the Lord Jesus was thinking about, was just drawing the simple picture about men and women who are lacking something. That's what it means to be thirsty, is it not? To be lacking something. But more than just lacking something, it is a state of being in need of something. Really, when we think about a man who's thirsting, he is in need of that which gives him life. Without water, none of us would survive. And so the Lord Jesus is drawing a picture about a man who is in great need. A man who is lacking something. A man who, who must have something. And without having this something, he will have no life. And the Lord says to that man, what you lack, you can come to me and you'll find all your need met. Come to me and drink. And so that's the picture. I want to think just uh, about two things as we think about this picture. Firstly, the reason for their thirst. And then we'll think about the removal of their thirst. So firstly, the reason for their thirst. Well, what was the Lord Jesus really meaning? Well, I think if we were to remind ourselves just about where the Lord Jesus was when he said these words, we might begin to understand the very simple truth that he was getting at. You see, he was talking to a crowd of people just like you and I. They were a crowd of people, and one of their one of their great aims in life was that they might gain acceptance with God. And they had been trying with religion. They had been trying with following religious leaders. They had been giving their efforts, some of them even their money. And they had been pouring their lives into this system. And the hope was that they might be made right with God. That they might have an acceptance with him. That they might, that they might be sure of heaven when they die. But alas, the Lord Jesus looked upon them all. And he said, no, you're thirsting. You're not ready to meet God. You're lacking you're lacking acceptance with God. You don't have spiritual life. 
You're not saved. And the reason for their thirst, the reason why they didn't have salvation was because of their sins. And the Lord Jesus says to them, is there not one of you would just come and realize your need? Is there any man who thirsts? I wonder, have you ever realized you have a need? A need to be made right with God? The Bible says that all of us have sinned. And the Bible says that all of us are guilty before God in our sins. And God will never accept a man before him. A God will, God will never let man enter into heaven when he dies, so long as he's in his sins. I wonder would there be one maybe listening today, and life's road is, is well behind you now, and you've never had your sins forgiven. You're not ready to meet God. Maybe you would come to realize that you're thirsty, that you're lacking spiritual life, you're lacking salvation. Well, let me come then, not now about the reason for their thirst, but the removal of their thirst. Said the Lord Jesus, if there is a man who's thirsty, if there's a man willing or a woman willing to accept they're not right with God, they're not ready, they don't have hope, they don't have sins forgiven, well then he said, come on to me and drink. You will notice the singularity about that lovely phrase. He says, come on to me and drink. He doesn't say, try a couple of things. He doesn't say, bring your good works, bring your religion, bring all your efforts, bring your good life, and then come to me. No, no, friend. Here's how any man or any woman, the only way, any man or any woman can be saved by singular coming to the Lord Jesus and trusting him alone. Only Jesus can save. Our good works will never do anything to deal with our sins. But the man who comes alone and trusts in the Lord Jesus, who died for our sins on the cross, he will have that thirst, that great emptiness removed. He will be filled with salvation. He will drink that water of salvation. The singularity. I was thinking not only about that, but the scope of it. He says any man. That's lovely. Everyone's included. Forget about religious barriers. Any man. But what about, as I close, we might have said about the satisfaction the man who trusts Christ will be satisfied forever. Money can never satisfy. Youth can never satisfy. All these things fade away. Life itself, in and of itself, can't satisfy. Only him. But as I close, you'll remember the substitute, won't you? You see, the Lord Jesus on the cross died for your sins and mine. And he said on the cross, in the very same book, I thirst. It was because of the thirst that he endured on the cross. When God punished him for our sins, for your sins. It's all because of that work that he accomplished there when he died for us. That's the only reason why your thirst can be removed. Trust Christ today and you will be saved, and I'll see you in heaven.